I am so excited Creality sent me my first 3D scanner to review, which is something I could really use for many of my different 3D projects. I will show you my results, the tricks I have learned to achieve better scans, and some fun project ideas like 3D printing, 3D animation, and visual effects using these scans. So let's get started from the beginning and see what's included inside the box. It comes with this nice quality case if you want to protect and travel with this scanner. And I'll provide a link to the main website for more details and specs on this scanner if you're interested. So, what do we have here? We have a mini tripod, a phone holder, and a holder for the scanner, and the camera scanner itself. And this tripod holder looks pretty cool to me and would work great for a lightsaber prop. And sorry, that's just the first thing that came to my mind while holding it. Anyway, the assembly is pretty straightforward. The top part came loose, so I tightened it with the provided Allen wrench. I then attached the scanner, which gets its 5 volts of power from the tripod, so remember to keep it charged. And then this cable also connects to your phone. And it doesn't work with all phones, so make sure you check the website. And that's it for the assembly. We're almost ready to start scanning. So next we need software, and there's a QR code at the top to scan that will take you directly to the download page. And by the way, the phone software download needs to be unzipped before it's installed as an app on your phone. So you can download the software on your phone or your Windows PC, and I heard Mac OS support is coming soon. And the scan settings are pretty simple. Are you scanning a small, medium, or large object? Or is it a human face or body? And the scanner will use different algorithms accordingly. And does your object have better geometry or texture to track? So, it's like this object here. This has many well-defined geometric shapes for tracking compared to this object, which is mostly a smooth sphere, so the texture detail would be best for tracking. And I always set the quality to high, and I always want pictures to be taken, stitched together, and applied to the scan for a realistic texture. Okay, and here is my first attempt at 3D scanning ever. And I'm reading the notes it tells me, like, move closer, perfect, hold that distance, and of course green means good. And I watch these two screens to make sure I'm centered. Then I press start, and I slowly start to rotate the object on the Lazy Susan. But I noticed when I got to the back that it's so symmetrical that the tracking software got lost. So I switched the setting from geometry to texture tracking, and I got better results. Press the next button to stop the scanning and create that 3D geometry data. And I definitely missed some details here being my first scan. I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And I also only captured 486 frames, which is pretty low information. I now try to aim for around 1200 to 2000 frames. And you have a few options here that you can patch holes or fully enclose the mesh. And you can save the file as an STL, which is perfect for just 3D printing, or an OBJ or PLY file format, which is better for visual effects and animations since it includes the actual texture information too. Up next, round two. And I want to test this Diet Coke bottle souvenir I got from Disneyland's Galaxy's Edge. I got a little more confident, a little more ambitious, and I tried to move the scanner up and down to capture more details. And I'm impressed I can actually read the text from the scanned image. It's getting better, but this object has reflections, which picks up the light, which confuses the scanner. So I heard you can try to dull the highlights with the powder, so I quickly tried throwing it in some flour to see if that would help. But I want the actual clean surface to be captured, so I opted to try adjusting my light instead. And I tried different techniques and ground planes, and I got a few good results, but I felt that it was best to move the scanned object to a tripod in the center of my room so I can have more space for better diffuse lighting and a bigger scanning area so I can reach more angles to fill in the gaps. I kept some of my old childhood toys like the Street Sharks action figure, which has great asymmetry geometry and really good details for scanning. And yes, it's a pretty good scan, but I lost some details in the teeth and the hands, probably due to some shadows from the top-down lighting. So I used this 3D printed green holder I made for a previous project to lay the model down flat on its back. And yes, this was a good choice since it ended up capturing more of those details in the teeth and the hands. Next, I wanted to try to see if I can completely scan a full object. So the strings will allow me to capture every possible angle of that object. And the string is very thin, but I was wondering if it would be detected by the scanner. I tried it both with this toy and the plant pot to see what would happen. And just like I thought, I was able to capture all sides, including the bottom, but the scanner did detect the strings, which just shows how good the scanner resolution really is. And check this out, this planter is the perfect thing to scan. Maybe it's the shape or material, but look how fast I'm moving, and it still tracks. I don't recommend moving this fast, by the way, I'm just showing you how quickly it can track. Which brings me to my best scanned object ever. My shoe which was also able to keep up with the fast movements, but I slowed down for much better results. Maybe it's the shape, the asymmetry, the texture, the low shine, I don't know, but definitely it captured every detail. And then when you look at it with the applied texture, it really helps it make look realistic. So it's a good tip to find what objects scan best, so you can learn what features work for other objects to scan. 
And if there is a really reflective surface, you could try covering that part up with tape. And if it doesn't scan well vertically, you can try it at a different angle. And that was all fun, but now for the real test. Can it capture a person? I invited my friend David over to help me. I'll add a link to his creative content in the description below. So I changed the scan setting to face mode, and I moved very slowly to try to capture every angle. And this was just our first try, but we were both really impressed with the results. These settings are great for capturing facial geometry and textures, though this setting was limiting since it didn't want to capture any of the neck, ears, or hair. But still, it's pretty cool, and I wanted to try next. So in case you're wondering, this is what a 3D scanned image of a 3D sage looks like. I think David's scan turned out a lot better, but still, this is pretty cool. I could have tried one more time for better results, but up next, I really wanted to try a full body. This was a longer and slower process, and we had problems scanning areas that were not well lit. So we had to add more light to try to fill in those shadows. And we captured more angles and more frames, which felt even longer in this non-air conditioned garage, by the way, but check out the results. There are some missing gaps, but overall I think it captured some great detail. And right here, this was probably the best full body 3D scan that we got. It has really good geometry and texture details. And all these scans have thousands to millions of polygons of detail, which is great to send to a slicer program to be 3D printed. So you can pretty accurately duplicate any object that you already have. And if you keep the same units, the scale and proportions will be exactly the same as your original object. Or you can even make geometry adjustments in the 3D program. And as a 3D animator, I see the potential to scan an object and combine it with real footage to create a visual effect. In fact, one of these three objects isn't even real. Comment below if you think it's the cardboard box, the traveling case, or the floating shoe. So to make this visual effect, first I just filmed my table, and then I tracked it with software that can export a 3D camera into my 3D program, which I can then try to recreate the lighting, and this virtual camera will have all the same movements from the tracked footage. So then I can overlay these alpha shoe renders and shadows over the real footage, and I needed to make some color corrections and edits to contrast, but overall it matched pretty well. And let me know if you're interested in this, I can actually make a full visual effects tutorial if you want. And I can also swap out the 3D geometry with that real object since we have it scanned. I just first have to remove the green pole to capture a clean base plate so I can replace the objects that I want. I had to color key out the green pole and replace it with that clean empty plate that I captured. I'm sure you can tell I'm pretty excited about having the scanner. I can really use it for many of my 3D printing and 3D animation projects, so I see this scanner as just a cool new tool that can help me in my future projects. So my overall best tips would be to have soft, even lighting, and know that not every object will be great for 3D scanning. Just kind of see what works best and learn from those scans. I'm really glad I could share this experience with you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope we can hang out again sometime, and see you next time.